Hello everyone, Dr. Sutter Caton, physical therapist here with Vive Health. I'm looking forward to sharing all my knowledge with you and I hope you enjoy. So almost everyone has heard of a shoulder impingement before. In a shoulder impingement, the rotator cuff muscles, typically the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus, are pinched or impinged as they run underneath the subacromial space. So what the subacromial space is, is if you feel the top of your shoulder and feel the bone, underneath that, between that and the humerus of your arm, that's what we call the subacromial space where various tissues, ligaments, tendons run through. So for a variety of reasons that I'll get into later in the video, that space can be narrowed. And when that space is narrowed, as the arm goes overhead, those tendons can be pinched and impinged, causing pain and eventually tearing of the rotator cuff muscles. So shoulder impingements and rotator cuff tears typically go hand in hand, and it becomes this unfortunate feedback cycle where the rotator cuff muscle is getting impinged, which then it becomes swollen, inflamed, painful, and then that further narrows that subacromial space so then it becomes even more likely that you're gonna pinch the tendon further, tearing it even more potentially. So you can see how this kind of becomes a never ending cycle where the goal of physical therapy or other conservative treatment is gonna to be to try to break that cycle and allow some healing to occur. So someone with a shoulder impingement is usually gonna report pain or catching during certain shoulder movements it's gonna feel sort of like a sharp or pinching sensation. If it's more pain from the rotator cuff tear, which like I said, can go hand in hand, you might have pain sort of along the top of the shoulder and then even down into the side of the arm. So typically they're also gonna have pain if they attempt to lie on the affected shoulder. So they're gonna report that they're not able to sleep in that position or roll over onto that side at all. And typically this pain isn't at rest or it doesn't catch in certain motions. It's really when we look at bringing the arm out to the side. And so what I often have people do, and it's a, a test that we perform, it's called the painful arc test. It's very simple. You're just gonna bring your arm up by your side and back down. And so if someone has a shoulder impingement, right here feels fine. Once they get to about 60 degrees up to 120 degrees, this is the range where they might experience that impingement, that catching, that pinching, pinching sensation. Another thing we expect to find with a shoulder impingement is that the pain is worse, the impingement is worse when the arm is internally rotated. So what I mean by that is my arm, arm is out to the side. If I turn my thumb down, that's internal rotation. What that does is bring certain bony prominences where tendons attach and it rolls them over so that decreases the space of the subacromial area. And so if I do this same motion with my thumb down, I'm gonna have more pain than if I had my thumb the opposite way. External rotation is typically gonna alleviate some of those symptoms. Now because this issue is so common, there's a wide variety of risk factors that can predispose somebody to developing a shoulder impingement. So I'm gonna start with one that you cannot modify, and that's just your genetic shape of your acromion. So this is just decided by your genetics. So some people unfortunately have what we call a hooked acromion. So that bone at the top of the shoulder actually hooks down a little bit like this. And so you can imagine that's gonna narrow the space versus someone who has more of a flatter shape is typically gonna have more space in that area and is less likely, less likely to experience an impingement. Other things that we look at that are more modifiable, we're gonna see someone who does a lot of repetitious weightlifting, overhead athletes. These are the types of people that may develop this just from overuse and developing um, inflammation just from working those muscles um, all the time. Another thing we're gonna look at is their posture. So a rounded shoulder or a flexed kind of upper back is gonna also contribute to narrowing down that area. We're gonna look at their external rotation strength. So as I mentioned, being externally rotated or having the thumb sort of upwards or backwards pointed is going to allow more space in that area. So if you're lacking the strength to maintain that position when the arm goes overhead, you're gonna develop an impingement 
more likely than someone who has the strength to be able to maintain that position. Another thing I'm gonna look at is how is the scapular or the shoulder blade mobility of the person. So a large portion of what we think is just shoulder motion as the arm goes overhead is actually coming from the shoulder blade. As the arm goes overhead, the shoulder blade will rotate and allow up to 60 degrees of uh, shoulder elevation. So if someone's lacking the mobility or has poor control over their shoulder blade, that can cause the space to narrow and make it a lot harder for that arm to go overhead without an impingement to occur. And finally, I'm also gonna wanna know if the person has a history of shoulder dislocations, because if there's laxity in the joint from dislocating their shoulder a number of times, that shoulder is just not gonna move as it should as the arm goes overhead. It's gonna have what we call aberrant motion, meaning motion that isn't normally supposed to occur. And that can cause impingements and an otherwise normal shoulder wouldn't have. I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.